NCOS Stories of Change and Good Practice, Organisational Change, Who to Involve and How to Manage Relationships in a Non-Profit Merger. I'm Graham Innes, I'm the former Disability Discrimination Commissioner with the Australian Human Rights Commission uh, and now I'm a uh, company director and uh, consultant. You take everyone with you, not just boards and senior managers, but staff and clients and, and you do that through a transparent process. If a merger goes wrong what normally happens is that individuals walk away from the new organisation and I always regard that as a bit of a, a, a disappointment or a failure because it means that um, the organisation wasn't able to take those people with it. I'm Annie Doyle, I'm the CEO of Civic Disability Services. If you don't consult with people, if you don't bring them on the journey it's no, it's no different to how you would like to be treated yourself. My name is Diana Ferner and I'm a director in the consulting team at Social Ventures Australia, the unspoken stakeholder who may or may not be consulted as part of the merger process is obviously the end user. To be keeping them front and centre in every conversation that you have is a critical part of the merger journey. Particularly in disability, there's a massive trust piece. Um, families don't want to deliver their child to you unless they trust you implicitly. It's critical to keep users completely aware of the process. Transparency is really important because um, if the users walk away, whatever the reason, then you don't have, the organisation's purpose uh, disappears. So it's the users of the service, um, as are the volunteers, the staff, and the leaders of the organisation are all critical stakeholders. Every collaboration requires um, you to leave your ego at the door um, to take that humble approach and to learn from the people that you're actually collaborating with because there is no way that we have all the answers. Say, I, I hope to, I, I try to, but don't overpromise because I think that's the thing that lets people down. In one merger in which I was involved uh, almost 20 years ago now, one of the real problems was who was going to be the CEO and it was a merger of three organisations and... Um, and all three CEOs thought that they should be the CEO of the new organisation. So um, we all went back to our, uh, our respective boards and said to the CEO, when we complete this merger, that is, that is it for you in this organisation. That was a tough decision. But what it showed was that the outcome to be achieved was more important than the personalities in question. People have to be continually encouraged to keep their eyes on the prize, to keep focused on what it is, what the outcome is that we want to get from this merger. The new organisation won't be like organisation B and it won't be like organisation A. It will be like the new organisation. And the most effective mergers, I think, are where you bring the best elements from each organisation to build a stronger composite. In the case of House With No Steps and the Tipping Foundation, they announced their merger last year and they've just launched their new logo this year. So you can take time to think about what is the appropriate brand for the organisation. You need to listen to what they have to say because it's the small things that make a difference. So sometimes you think, oh, we're going to have to break down and change the SCADS award and all these other things. That's not what they're about. They, it's the small things. They just want to make sure that, you know, you celebrate something on a certain day or you, you do something special with clients about a certain event. It's not about the big things. It never is about the big things. It's always the small things.